Hey everyone at home or wherever you happen to be, I'm Miss Jamie and welcome to another Art Explorations for Kids. So what is one point perspective? Well, it's when you have a single point on your horizon line and it's also called a vanishing point uh, from which you have all these lines coming from and it helps to show things, objects getting smaller in the background and larger as they are closer to us. So for an example of one point perspective, I have this box here and we have a single plane of the box facing us which means that back here on the horizon line somewhere there is a single point from which the lines of our box are being created and that's what we're gonna work on today is we're going to work on creating a cityscape with a street and sidewalks going back towards a mountain background so we're gonna take our Jerry's Jumbo Jet Black Pencil and a ruler and what we're going to do is we're going to mark off okay so what you're going to want to do is mark halfway down your page and create a line across okay so from here We're going to go ahead and make a point in the center of our uh, line that we've created, which is our horizon line. And this is going to be our vanishing point. So this is where we're going to make all of our lines that are receding to the background meet. So what we're going to want to do is start by creating our road and our sidewalk. So keeping the edge of your ruler, your pencil right on your vanishing point, start a line going just about an inch or so out to the edge of your paper. And be sure that you are drawing these lines softly at first because we're going to go back and outline our important lines with our jumbo pencil and get rid of our guidelines with the eraser. We're going to do the same on the other side here. So now you can see we have this road that we've started that's getting smaller as we go back. So now we're going to go ahead and create our sidewalk. So Again, from the vanishing point, coming out. And I'm going to try to make them about the same on each side, going up the paper. And then we're going to come in and just create that slight edge of our sidewalk. And this doesn't have to be exact. Each drawing will be unique. Yours will look different from mine. Okay. So now we're going to put trees on this side and some buildings over here. So we're going to draw a guideline for our buildings. And I'm going to have my line go right to the very corner, top right corner, down to this vanishing point. And 
And I'm going to go ahead and mark in four buildings. And you can make them whatever size you want. But you can see the lines that I'm drawing from the top of this top diagonal here right to where our sidewalk starts. So you're going to go over and create another line parallel to that one. And then this is going to be the face of another building here. So we have one face here, one here. And just to show you where we're going with this, I'm going to go ahead and draw in the roof here. So just to show you, make it a little bit more clear what we're doing, we're going to be getting rid of those guidelines in just a moment. And you can see we have our building here, and we've started an alley in here. We can go ahead and mark that off since we've pretty much completed this building here. So then I'm just going to do the same thing for two more buildings. And so as you're going back, you also want to remember to make your gaps smaller and they don't have to be the exact same degree that you are shortening them as these buildings are going back. You just want to show that they're getting farther and farther away. And so as things get farther away, not only do they get smaller, but gaps that may even have been the same seem to be shorter if they're more at a distance from us. So you can see I've done that here with the spaces in between our buildings. and with the faces of our buildings. Okay. So now we're going to do some trees over here. And I'm going to make another line again from our vanishing point, this time up to the left-hand corner of our paper. So now that we have another line drawn out to our vanishing point, we're going to start adding in our trees, making sure that we stay under this guideline here, and go ahead and create the giant top of our tree. And we're going to pull it in right above this line and start drawing our trunk. And you want to make sure that you start the roots of your tree right here at what is going to be the edge of your sidewalk. Adding in the roots of the bottom of my tree. And let's see, I'm going to have a branch come up like this. I'm going to bring my leaves down and bring a few leaves just in front of the trunk and that branch. So now we're going to start drawing a second tree behind this first tree. Again, bringing it in above this horizon line. And I'm going to start a branch, bring the trunk down. We're going to make sure that we're keeping away from the edge of our sidewalk here. Now our trunks aren't going to overlap because they are not directly one in front of the other. Bring another branch up here. And do what I did with that same tree and bring the leaves in front of the branch and the trunk. And then I'm going to bring the leaves in the back here. And then I'm going to just do that for the next two trees, making sure that they just keep getting smaller as they're going back to the background. So you can see that one point perspective 
is great for handling all sorts of shapes because now we've done an organic shape, like our trees here. And we've also done our geometric shapes over here, like our buildings. So now we're just going to come in the background here and create some mountains and just create a fun mountain shape that you like. Okay. So now the last thing that we want to do is add lines into our sidewalk here. And so we're just going to take our ruler and I'm going to start my lines across my sidewalk right back here. And what we're going to do is we're going to make each section of our sidewalk just a little bit bigger as the sidewalk gets closer to us. So you can see from our so you can see from our vanishing point to this line how far this distance is. And now I'm going to make it just a little bit wider between the next two lines. Okay. And to finish off our sidewalk, we're just going to complete our lines on the sides here, on the curb, coming down. So now that we've completed filling in the lines for our drawing, we're going to go ahead and take our guidelines out. So for example, you can see our horizon line here is cutting through our tree trunks. So we can go ahead and take these extra lines out. And now we're left with our horizon line just showing behind the trees. And this is just going to be a field that we're going to color in in just a few moments. So we have our guideline here for our trees. And we really don't need this guideline at all because it's not making an edge of these trees. We've created our nice fluffy leaves here. And we can just do away with this whole line now. We're going to do the same thing for the horizon line over here behind the buildings that we did for the trees here, except we don't have any gaps that are showing empty space between our buildings. Each gap between our buildings is showing the next building in our alleyway. So we're just going to come in and from this point here where our horizon line meets this first building, just go ahead and erase. And it's okay if you erase some of your building because we're going to come back in and make a darker outline with our Jumbo Jet black pencil. And our final line that we want to get rid of is this diagonal except for where it makes the edges of our buildings up here on our rooftops. So that just means in between our little alleyways here, we're going to get rid of that little corner. And this little bit back here, because that edge doesn't make up the top of the building. OK? So now we're ready to go ahead back in with our Jumbo Jet black pencil and outline this a little bit darker and get the whole picture ready for painting. So now you can see I've gone ahead and outlined my entire drawing. I have my important lines uh, nice and dark, and I've gotten rid of all those extra lines that we no longer need. So now we're ready to go ahead and color in our painting. And if you want to add in a few extra things like a line down the center of the road or a few clouds in your background, then go ahead if you want to 
at an extra building or something um, and do a little bit of erasing because we did just use our jumbo jet pencil the paint will cover up where you have erased and we're going to use our big pan of watercolors here and you don't have to paint the trees naturally like brown for the bark green for the leaves you can pick whatever colors you want and just make this whole landscape your own. So I'm going to let you go ahead and paint and you can press pause here and I'm going to go paint my picture and come back and we'll compare and see what each of us has done. Okay, so now we've gone ahead and painted in our one point perspective picture. We have our landscape here and I've done mine with a whole lot of teals, purples, reds, and pinks. And I decided to go with fall colors for my trees. And I added a line down the center of my road to make two lanes. And I've also played with a bunch of our fun glitter metallics that you have in your palette in your own set along the edge here just to give it a little bit of shimmer and so with this technique even though it does seem like a lot of work we get this great payoff at the end with this awesome layout that we have with accurate perspective that our eyes actually see so if you are happy with your painting where it is, you can go ahead and stop the video right here. However, if you would like to continue on to the advanced portion, we're going to start adding in some shadows and give a little bit more depth to our picture. So stick around and we'll be right back. So what you want to do is take your acrylic set here and just pick out colors that are similar to ones that you've already painted in. And what we're going to do is look at the difference between using our watercolors and our acrylics and the different effects that they give us. You're going to notice once we start painting that these colors are less see-through or translucent than than our watercolors here. So it's gonna help us get these shadows in places like in my alleyways between the buildings here, darker. So I've already picked out my colors and you can pick the size of brush that you think will best work with your painting. And I'm gonna use a number six because I think that's a good medium size and I can get in smaller areas and also some bigger areas if I need to. And you just want to pick out a color that is similar to what you have going on your paper. Like I'm going to pick out this building right here. And I've chosen this teal color, which is similar to it. And I don't want to put too much paint on my brush, just enough to get the color down. And you can see we haven't watered this down like we did with the watercolors. And even though the color is similar, it's creating a shade or a darker version of that color. So the next time you make a painting, you can take that into consideration just how you want the final look of your piece to be if you're using if you're going to use acrylic or watercolor. So now that we've worked on our more geometric side with our buildings, we're going to come over and look at creating shadows that our organic shapes, our trees would be casting. And I'm having my light source come from back here. So that means the shadows are going to be cast in this direction. So for my trees on the ground here, I'm going to pick a green. And 
and create a nice organic shape at the bottom coming from the base of the tree going back Okay, so now that I've done a shadow here, maybe I want to add some more details as well. And something I was thinking about is maybe some clouds up here in the sky. You can add extra little highlights to your leaves, extra little buildings in the background. Because we can add acrylics, because we can add acrylics on top of our watercolors, it really gives us a lot of room to work with a drawing or painting that we've already done. So I'm gonna take my white and just up here, create a little fluffy cloud. So now that I've shown you how to treat your geometric shapes, your organic shapes with shadows, and also about adding a little bit of detail into your background, I want you to go ahead and continue adding in your shadows and whatever extra details you may want into your painting. And I'm gonna do the same, and you can go ahead and pause, and we're gonna come back and see how each other's paintings look. Okay, so welcome back. Now we have our completed pictures with our shadows drawn in. As you can see, I finished adding the shadows in my alleys between my uh, different buildings here. I have my shadows being cast by my trees, and I've added a few extra clouds up here and some color to this middle line I decided to add in my road. Now you may have decided to add some shadows up here, some extra highlights for your trees that are facing your light source or the sun, or maybe some shadow back here and detail in the trunks of your trees, or maybe even a few little extra trees or buildings back here. But whatever you've chosen to do, I know that your picture looks wonderful and that it's turned out vibrant and beautiful. So now we've completed our picture, and this has been our One Point Perspective lesson, and I hope you have had as much fun working on this with me as I have with you, and I cannot wait to see you on our next Art Explorations for Kids.